I've finally gotten a chance to do a maiden flight with the solar plane version 2. It's really similar to version 1, but the main differences are in the wing. Its total span is 118 inches, or 9.8 feet. That's 3.5 inches larger than V1. I was able to squeeze in 64 solar cells. That's 8 more than V1. The wing structure has two square carbon spars, as opposed to only one like before. This makes it a lot stiffer and solves the inverse aileron effect problem that caused the V1 to crash. For a closer look at the wing structure and the tech specs, see Solar Plane Episode 3. The Genison MPPT charge controller is installed in the fuselage and wired in between the solar cells and the battery. I decided to go with a 3000 mAh 4S LiPo which is pretty small for a plane of this size, but I was trying to cut down on the weight to make up for the heavy wings. I did a maiden flight on a very calm day. After launching and getting it trimmed out, it flew great. It's very slow and stable. On this January day, the sun was still pretty low in the sky, so the solar cells weren't really doing that much. The next step with this plane is to fly it again on a day later in the year when the sun is higher in the sky. I'll also be installing an Eagle Tree Vector for OSD and autopilot capabilities. My catch here was a little rough, but nothing was damaged. A couple months ago, I got an idea for a manufacturable solar wing design that could be made out of molded EPO foam. It would be modular, so users could slide as many segments as they wanted to onto the main carbon spar to determine the wingspan. This is a 3D printed prototype I made. The solar cells lay flat in these indented areas and connect via tab wire. Covering film would be used to cover the cells and complete the airfoil. As of now, this concept is kind of far out because an EPO foam mold is upwards of $10,000, but it is interesting to think about. Stay tuned for the next solar plane video, which will probably be out closer to the summer solstice. Thanks for watching, bye.